Hello everyone, this is Swati Jaiswal, student of second year September batch from University of Perpetual Health System, Delta. Today we are going to do the abdominal examination. For that, we need to learn some basic things. Uh, for example, we need a good light and relaxed and well drapped patient with exposure of abdomen from just above, just above the xiphoid process to the symphysis pubis. Now, for the perfect examination of the abdomen, we have to check the patient has an empty bladder. Make the patient comfortable in supine position with a pillow under head and perhaps another under the knees. Now, we have to slide a hand under the lower back of the patient to see if the patient is relaxed and lying flat on the table. Now, we'll ask the patient to keep the arms at the side or folded across the chest. When the arms are above the head, an abdominal wall stretches the tightens, making palpation difficult. Move the gown to below the nipple line and drape to the level of sympathetic pubis. Before we begin the palpation, ask the patient to point to any area of pain so that we can examine these areas. Warm your hands and stethoscope. To warm your hand, rub them together on a place or place them under hot water. You can also palpate through the patient's gown to absorb warmth from the patient's body before exposing the abdomen. Approach the patient calmly and avoid quick unexpected movements. Watch the patient's face for any sign of pain or discomfort. Avoid having long fingernails when examining the patient. Distract the patient if necessary with conversation or question. If the patient is frightened or ticklish, being palpation with the patient's hand under yours. After a few moments, slip your hand underneath to palpate directly. Let's begin with the inspection. Inspect the surface, contour and movement of the abdomen including the following. The skin. We have to note the scars, stray or dilated veins or rashes. The umbilicus observe the contour and location and any inflammation or bulges suggesting a ventral hernia. We have to look for the abdominal symmetry. Also, we have to survey the inguinal and femoral areas. Uh, now, we have to see the contour of the abdomen. Is it flat, rounded or protuberant or scaphoid? We should also look for the enlarged liver, spleen and has any descended below the rib cage. Now let's move on to the auscultation. Auscultation provides important information about bowel mortality. Listen to the abdomen before performing percussion or pulsation palpation because these maneuvers may alter the frequency of bowel sound. Now Normal sound consists of click and gurgles occurring at estimate before 5 to 34 minutes. Occasionally you may hear borbi gai me prolonged gurgles of hyperparistalsis. Listen for the bruits over the aorta, renal arteries and the iliac arteries and the femoral arteries. The percussion. Percussion helps us to assess the amount of and distribution of gas in the abdomen. Possibly masses that are solid or fluid filled and the size of the liver and spleen. We have to percuss the abdomen lightly in for all four quadrants to assess the distribution of tympani and dullness. Tympani usually predominates because of gas in gastrointestinal tract. Briefly percuss the lower anterior chest above the coastal margin on the right you will usually find the dullness of the liver on the left the tympani that overlies the gastric air bubble and splenic flexure of the colon.
Begin with palpation, light palpation, gentle palpation is especially helpful for electing abdominal tenderness, muscular resistance and some superficial organs and masses. It also serves to reassure and relax the patient. Keeping your hand and forearm on horizontal plane with fingers together and flat on the abdominal wall, palpate the abdomen with a light, gentle dipping motion. As you move your hands to difficult different quadrants, raise it just off the skin, gliding smoothly, palpate in all four quadrants. If there is any kind of resistance is present, try to distinguish voluntary guarding from involuntary muscular spasm. Now deep palpation, this is usually required to de delineate abdominal masses, again using the palmar surface of your finger, press down in all four quadrants, identify any mass, note their location, size, shape, consistency, tenderness, pulsations and any mobility with respiration and focus from the examining hand. Now let's move on to the liver. We will start with percussion. Measure the ver ver vertical span of liver dullness in the right midclavicular line. First locate the midclavicular line carefully to avoid inaccurate measurement. Now starting at the level below the umbilicus in the right lower quadrant in the area of tympani not dullness because upward towards the liver. Identify the lower border of dullness in the midclavicular line. Next, identify the upper border of the liver dullness in midclavicular line. Starting at the nipple line, lighten, lightly because from the lung resonance down towards the liver dullness. Liver span by percussion are most accurate when the liver is enlarged with palpation. Place your hand uh, behind the patient parallel to the supporting the right 11th and 12th ribs and adjacent soft tissues below. Remind the patient to relax on your hand if necessary. By pressing your hand upward, the patient's liver may be felt more easily by your own hand. The right hand on the patient's right abdomen lateral to the rectus muscle with your fingertips well below the lower border of the liver dullness. Ask the patient to take deep breath, try to feel the liver edge as it comes down to meet your fingertips. If you feel it, listen the pressure of your palpating hand slightly so that liver can slip under your finger pads and you can feel its interior surface. Note if there is any tenderness. In order to feel the liver, you may have to alter your pressure according to the thickness and resistance of the abdominal wall. If you cannot feel it, move your palpat palpating hand closer to the coastal margin and try again. Try to trace the liver edge both laterally and medially. Palpation through the rectus muscle. Cooking technique may be helpful, especially when the patient is obese. Stand to the right of patient chest, place both the hands side by side on the right abdomen below the border of liver dullness. Press with in with your fingers and up towards the costal margin. Ask the patient to take deep breath. The liver edge shown below shown here is palpable with finger pads or both the hands. Spleen, uh, the two techniques may help us to detect the splenomegaly and enlarge the spleen are percussion and palpation. Let's begin with percussion. Percuss the left lower anterior chest wall roughly from the border of cardiac dullness at 6th rib to anterior axillary line and down to the costal margin and area termed trapeze space. Now the percussion is moderately accurate in detecting the splenomegaly. Its sensitivity is about 60 to 80 percent and specificity is 72 to 94 percent. The lowest interspace in the left anterior axillary line. This area is usually tympanitic. Then ask patient to take deep breath and percuss again. When the spleen size is normal, the percussion note usually remains tympanistic. The palpation with your left hand reaches over around the patient to support and press forward the left uh, rib cage and adjacent soft tissue with your right hand below the left coastal margin. Please press in towards the spleen. Begin palpation low enough so that you are below a possible enlarged spleen. 
If your hand is close to the costal margin, it is not sufficiently mobile to reach up the under rib cage. Ask the patient to take deep breath. Try to feel the tip or edge of the spleen as it comes down to meet your fingertip. Note if there is any tenderness, assess the splenic contour and measure the distance between the spleen's lowest point and the left costal margin. In approximately 5% of normal results, the tip of spleen is palpable. Cause in, uh, now repeat your pal palpation with patient lying on the right side with legs somewhat flexed at hip and knees. In this position, gravity may bring the spleen forward and try to ride into palpable location. Clean. Let's move on to the kidneys. For the kidneys, we will begin with palpation. For palpation of kidney, we have to move patient's left side. Place your right hand behind the patient just below the parallel tool rib. With your fingertips just reaching the costal vertebral angle, lift the trying to displace the kidney anteriorly. Place your hand gently in left upper quadrant lateral and parallel to the rectus muscle ask the patient to take a deep breath at the peak of inspiration press your hand firmly to deep into the left upper quadrant just below the costal margin try to capture the kidney before your before between your two hands ask the patient to breathe out and then to stop breathing briefly slowly release the percus of your left hand feeling at the same time for the kidney to side back into expire position. The kidney is palpable. Des describe its size, contour and any tenderness. Think percussion tenderness of the kidney. If you find any tenderness when examining the abdomen, also check each con costal vertebral angle. Pressure from your fingertip may be enough to elect tender Tenderness. If not, use first percussion. Place the ball one hand in the costal vertebral angle. Strike it with the ulnar surface of your fist. Use enough force to cause a perceivable but painless jar or thug to save the patient from repositioning. Integrate this assessment into your examination of posterior lung or backward. Knee, let's move on to the aorta. Press the firmly deep upper abdomen slightly to the left midline and identify the aortic pulsation in people older than age 50. Assess the width of aorta by pressing deeply in upper abdomen with one hand on each side of aorta as illustrated. In this age group, a normal aorta is not more than 3 cm wide, average 2.5 cm. This measurement does not include the thickness of abdominal wall. The, this Ease of feeling aortic pulsation varies greatly with the thickness of abdominal wall and with the anterior posterior diameter of the abdomen. There are some special techniques used for the assessment of uh, ascites, appendicitis, acute cholestrocytis, ventral hernia, mass of abdominal wall. For assessing possible ascites, protubulant abdomen with bulging flanks such as possible ascites because this ascitic fluid crestingly sink the gravity areas. Gas filled loops of bowel rise. Percussion gives a dull note in dependent areas of abdomen. Look for such pattern by per percussing outward and several direction from the central. Additional two techniques helps us to confirm ascites through although body signs may be misleading. First test is test for shifting dullness. After percussing the border of tympani and dullness with patient supine, ask the patient to turn into one side, percuss and mark the border again. In person without a sight is the border between tympani and dullness usually stay relatively constant. Another test is test for a fluid wave. Ask the patient or assistant to press the edges of both hands. Firmly downward the midline of the abdomen. This pressure helps us to stop the transmission of wave through the fat. While you tap one flank sharply with your fingertips, fill the opposite flank of the impulse transmitted through the fluid. Unfortunately, this sign is also negative until ascites is obvious. It is sometimes positive in people without ascites.